chair. unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that hath made us, and we are not of ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. He is mercy and everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. With that said, Let's just close our eyes and pray right quick, and we'll get into the Word. Lord, we thank you that your Word just reassures us that, that you are King and you are on the throne. And Lord, we just thank you that, that you bring us to this place to, to give you glory, to hear your Word. So Lord, just open our hearts and our minds to receive all that you have for us this morning, Lord. Bring us to a place of openness and to understanding, to realize who you are. And be aware of your presence and aware of all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, some of you may remember here about, I don't know, maybe it was a month ago, three weeks ago, a transformer blew up down here at Toltec and, and, and Bataglia, and Arizona City was without power. And it was for a whole 24 hours. A whole 24 hours. Some guy got on Facebook and said I, he was making T-shirts that said, I surveyed, survived the great Arizona City power outage of 2019. It looked like you were out 24 hours. But see, we pay our light bill and we pay our water bill. And we expect, certainly expect when we get home and turn on the light, that it should come on. And when we get ready to go take a nice hot shower, we expect that nice hot water to come out of there. And we should be able to adjust it to any temperature we want, and we should be comfortable. We pay our bill. I only want what I paid for. Right? The trash man. You go out and you put your dumpster out there on the road, and you pay for two pickups a week. And maybe you only got one bag of kitchen trash in there, but you put it out there, and the guy misses your house, and what do you do? Hey! I paid for two pickups a week, and I got to pick up my trash. You better get back out here and pick it up. Because I paid for it. I deserved it. See, we only want what we deserve. We only want what we expect to get because of what we did. Remember in the 1980s McDonald's? You deserve a break today. Remember that commercial? But you know, we, we, we really aspire that we deserve good things. We really believe that because we work hard and because we do what we're supposed to do, we try to live right, we, we shouldn't, bad things shouldn't happen to us. And when something bad happens, we go, well, why is this happening to me? What did I do wrong? Last night I was thinking about this when Jose was doing his skit. And he's talking, and Paul's talking to, this, Paul is talking to God, and he goes, God, I've served you with my life. I've done all these things. Why do these things keep happening to me? That's our first response. That's the first way we feel like it. Why? Why I've been a good guy? Why did bad things happen to me? And there's a little phrase, well, bad things happen to good people. Does that really make you feel any better when somebody says that? No, you just want to slap them. <laughs> that doesn't make an excuse. That doesn't cover it up. That doesn't make us feel any better. <laughs> The implication is that we deserve good things. But see, Jesus didn't teach us that we deserve good things. Jesus taught us that you're going to have all kinds of troubles in this life. There's a lot of things that are going to be happening. And, and, and Jose skipped last night again. 
the stones that they threw at Paul, the stones that they stoned Paul with. Uh, Paul, uh, Jose sang the song, Lord, thank you for the stones. Thank you for the rough times of my life that kept me in close connection with you. Amen. Because we as people automatically, when things start to get bad, we start looking for an answer. We start looking for somewhere to turn. We start looking for why. And our spirit tells us to cry out to the Lord. Or we're naturally built that way that we would say, oh, Lord, why is this happening to me? Even, even if you don't go to church, if you've never been in church, and you don't, you just really haven't been related with, with the Lord at all, when he gets down to the brass tank, you go, Lord, you finally <laughs> cry out to the one you know that's in charge. You finally cry out because your spirit knows. I truly believe, and I had a conversation with, with Josh, the pastor of the church in Pastor Grand yesterday or Friday. As people, as, as we're created by God, we're created to worship Him. That's how you were created. That's who you are, whether you like it or not. You can deny it. You can pretend that you don't. But the reality is that's how you were created. That's what you were created for. And when it gets down to brass tacks, we're like, oh, Lord, what's going on? Because we know it's real. we got a preacher sitting right here in the front row. <laughs> I love the kids when they want to help me preach. It's just, it's just great. <clears throat> But see, Jesus never, go to Luke 17. Luke chapter 17 and verse 10. <laughs> so likewise, ye, for ye shall do all these things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which is our duty. See, our duty. Jesus says, when you've done all the things, you, you, you've kept all the commandments, you've done everything perfect, you, you, it's not anything that you've done. You've just done what's reasonable. You've honored God with your life by doing the things He tells you to do. That's who we are. That's what we do. That's what makes our life the best that it can be. Is everything going to always be perfect? No. And when, but when the bad things, bad times come, we need to learn to where to read. See, and that's what the bad things are about. To teach us where to turn. How easy we can get through things. The amazing thing God can do. Then he wasn't feeling so good. Called the ambulance. They took him to the hospital. Oh, you got problems, dude. We're going to have to do surgery on you right away. This is a mercy. I don't want you to do nothing. Then he told me, doctor, don't go home and don't do nothing. Because you'd have a heart attack at any moment. So we prayed for Danny. Mm -hmm. Judy came and told us, and we prayed for Danny. And they scheduled his surgery the next Wednesday, this last week. We're going to go in, we're going to open you up and see what's going on. Well, he got there on Wednesday and they said, there ain't nothing wrong with you. We can't find anything wrong with you. I don't know about that. <laughs> and, and Judy says, well, thank you, Doc. And the doc says, don't thank me. Thank the Lord. That's who he is. That's the God we serve. And that's how fast he works if we remember to reach to him first. Yes. Not wait till the surgery's over and then pray that we get over it. It's our decision. It's our choice. God gave us that choice. It's built into you. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to believe it. But it's real. And deep down within your spirit, you already know that. Nobody has to teach you that. That's something you just instinctively already know. But it's that choice of saying, what am I going to do first? What's going to be my first response when something bad happens in my life? Well, I'm going to go sit down and figure out how I fix this. What am I going to do? Well, if you go do it on your own, it's going to be kind of tough. If you go do it without the guidance of God, it's going to be rough. If you jump out there and jump out ahead of him, he'll let you go. He gives you that free will. Okay. And believe me, I speak from experience. He'll say, go get her done, Callahan. Have a ball. <laughs> And when you get done digging through the mire and the mud and all that stuff, then you'll reach back to me and I'll help you when you get her done. <laughs> See, he loves us. He loves us so much that he, he tells us how, to, how our life can be blessed. And one of the ways he tells us for our life to be blessed is to remember his feast, remember his commands. He said, celebrate my feast. Don't forget to do that. Because I put them in a place and I put them in time so that two, at least two times a year, four times a year, you should be getting together and you should be remembering who I am. 
and remembering what I do in your life. That's the purpose of the feast, to gather us together. And he says, not only just gather the church, he said, gather everybody that's inside your fence. Anybody you can get, you get them to come to the feast because that's how we remember and we can, through the testimonies and through the things that we do and the skits and the music and all those things, we attest of who God is. And it keeps us reminded. We were talking about, at Gary's on Thursday night, we were talking about the law. <coughs> And the purpose of the law, the 633 commands in the law, and nobody can keep all those. But you know, I was thinking about that while we were talking about Thursday night. Of all those commands that he gave them in the law, everything they did, they had to think, well, what does the law say? You couldn't do anything. You couldn't drink anything. You couldn't eat anything. You couldn't wear anything. You couldn't do anything without referring back to what the law said. God gave them direction specifically day by day, task by task. If you'll do these things, I can bless your life. And then Jesus came and fulfilled the law and said, if you'll just love me and love your neighbor, I can bless your life. That's all he commanded. That was the reality. The first and greatest command, you love the Lord God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. And above this, there is no law. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as thyself. These two commands, these two commands hang all the law and all the prophets, he tells us. It's not that complicated. When someone we know has a problem, pray for them. First response. We, we commend, and I do commend our first responders. I commend the people that react right away when something happens. They're sitting there waiting at the fire station, at the police stations, at the sheriff's office. They're sitting there waiting, and as soon as something happens, they don't go, well, what do we do now? They respond. That's why they're called first responders. They jump, they run, they jump in the car, and they go. They don't think, well, what are we going to need when we get there? I don't know. Do we get a shovel and a rake and I don't know. We're going to see when we get there. No, they jump and they run and our response to things in our life should be the same way. We jump and we run to our prayer closet and we get in and we start praying. Because that's how God protects us. That's how he guides us. That's how he leads us. That's how he gives us that life that's so full of joy by being a first responder. Everybody in this room, everybody within the sound of my voice has the ability to be a first responder. When something happens, respond with prayer. Get on your knees and ask God, God, what do I do? I don't know what to do. I just pray. That's the most powerful thing that we have to the God that has done all the things we talk about, all the testimonies on Tuesday night, all the things I can sit here and attest to you that he's done while we've been in this church, all the things that he's done in your life, all your life, <coughs> be a first responder. Because, see, we don't deserve we don't deserve anything.